I can never celebrate an anniversary. Okay, as you can see, we're having one. Celebrate it a birthday. How the engaged company outperformed the disengagement. Hello, everyone. Dean on the street, host of the Dean Blackman Show. My travels bring me to South Florida, Fort Lauderdale, to the home of my special guest, Jack Lannan. Jack is a legend. He is the founder and the CEO of People First International. Jack, welcome to the Dean on the Street. Honored to be here. Uh, the Dean Blackman Show and uh, Thank you for inviting me to your home here in Fort Lauderdale, Florida. So uh, I really appreciate it. And, oh, uh, you know, you and I, you and I were introduced through uh, mutual acquaintances, yes. uh, mutual friends. Yes. Uh, matter of fact, we did a great show up in New York. Uh, that friend is Jeffrey Michelle yes. with uh, DivorceForce.com. Amazing. Uh, amazing. 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 And he, amazing he told guy. me, he told me, Dean on the street, Dean Blackman. He's got to get down to Florida. That the next person to do Dean on the street with is Jack Lennon. Thank so, you. Uh, Thank you, you know, Jack is uh, you know a legend. He uh, is a leadership uh, expert, uh, a, a world-renowned author, a, a speaker. I could just go on and on, but I'm going to let you tell my audience more about who uh, Jack Lennon is. Well, first of all, I want to say this to the audience, that Dean, this is the first time I've met you, and I've never met a more loving, caring, and sharing human being in my life. Wow. And the trust quotient that people talk about how important trust is, uh, talking about accelerating trust, you, how you come across to me because Everything's about me. It's not about Dean. And you want to honor me. You want to come to my home. And no one else would come down here on a rainy day. <laughs> this is, I mean, it's like a monsoon here. <laughs> rainy day? I just came from, as you know, you've seen lots of great uh, classic video clips of my soon-to-be 90-year-old mother, uh, Jean Blackman. We, we had a great two days together. Uh, you can see all the shows that I did with her, uh, obviously on Facebook, on YouTube. Uh, now moved over to uh, my mother-in-law, who's not in love with the camera, uh, nor wants to be on any shows. She's very private. <laughs> and Jack, as he said, it is a monsoon, a tsunami here. Yes. But uh, the way I am is I make a commitment, and I was so anxious to meet Thank you. Uh, this Jack Lannon that uh, nothing was going to stop me. <laughs> nothing was going to stop me <laughs> from, from, from seeing you. <laughs> so why don't, we, why don't we get into, and, and once again... Uh, be more specific who Jack Lanham is. Well, I am a man that, like you, I love people. And I found out I'll be 70 years old this year. And I found out when I was in my early 20s, one of the most important truths in my entire life, that all of growth and development in life is based on leadership. Hmm. It's all based on leadership. And leadership is really about one word. It's about example. Oh. Being an example. So my dad was my example. Hmm. And I have to tell you a, a quick story. How sure. this whole company started. It started over 45 years ago, Dean. And I was in college, studying uh, psychology in college. I just love human behavior. It's always been fascinating with human behavior. Why did that person do that? How did they become that? Mm -hmm. And so I was studying in college, learning, and absorbing everything. My dad said, come to work for the plant at APCO Corporation in Nashville, Tennessee. He said, over the summer, come to work at the plant. I'll give you the real world of business. If you really want to understand psychology, come to my plant. Mm -hmm. He was a general manager, had about a thousand employees. He said, it's really interesting. He told me when I was 17, he said, I have a thousand people here. He said, nobody works for me. I was going, never heard that in my life. But it stuck with me to this very day. I still hear him saying it right now when I was 17. He said, no one works for me. They work with me. Wow. Wow. I was going, 
well, that's different. I never knew the implication of all this. So I worked at the plant, then I would drive home with my dad, we carpooled together, and he asked me, he said, well, how'd he go today? And I said, Dad, I said, may I be really honest with you? He said, sure, I want you to be honest. He said, give me the feedback. I said, the supervisor that you have that's over me in this whole area that I work in, he doesn't know how to bring the best out of people. He brings the worst out of me. Mm. When he's around, I want to come home and take Prozac. <laughs> oh. <laughs> I want just like Darth Vader. <laughs> Bring it on my back, and he only talks about things that I do bad. No commendation, no celebration. Mm -hmm. He's on the C team, critical, condemning, and condescending. Wow. He's not on the A team. No appreciation, affirming, or acknowledging who I am mm -hmm. as a person, my gifts, my talents, or what I contribute to the team. Wow. It's all critical, all critical. He throws a kill switch in me. And he said, Do you think you could do better? And I said, no, I'm not saying I could do a better job than him. I'm not saying that. But I said, Dad, I know how I feel. I don't feel good. Mm -hmm. I said, if, you were to, if he were to ask me, your supervisor, I don't like the guy. I said, the guy's a great guy. But he's just not a good leader. Mm -hmm. And he has no self-awareness. He does not know he's a bad leader. And I said, Dad, if I were to ask him, or if he were to, if he were to ask me, how do you feel about you, Jack, when you're around me? that I wouldn't have to say anything. My head would start ticking <laughs> and my face would start moving. I would say then, I don't like me when I'm around you. Wow. In fact, I don't like you when I'm around you. Amazing. Because you bring it the worst. Wow. Then guess what he said to me? What did he say? He changed my life. My dad, I will, I remember When the you say he changed dad, your life, my did, dad. did your dad inspire you? Yes, that's what he did. To do what you yes. do today? He inspired the whole, he started wow. the company. He told me, looked at me in the kitchen table with my mother. I just talked to her uh, three weeks ago about this. Wow. She said, I remember that very moment. This is over 45 years ago. Hmm. He looked at me and said, son, you need to start a company. I said, what? I'm just you know, a young kid in my early 20s, by my second year of college. He said, no, you need to start a company. He said, we're going to form a corporation. And you're going to be the, uh, I said, I'll help you build the company. So we started a corporation at his table in Nashville, Tennessee, over 45 years ago. Wow. And it's inspiration. Unbelievable story. That's really inspiring. Thank you. Uh, with Dad, and I'm glad to hear Mom's still healthy. Yeah, oh, yes, she is. Great. Yes, yes. Awesome. Awesome. So why don't we get into a little bit more. Uh, what is People First International? What, it's as I said earlier, it's we figured out the key. The key to engagement. The Gallup says that in America, only 30% of the people are engaged in America. Mm. That's all. And Gallup says that uh, it's worse internationally. 13% of people internationally are engaged. Wow. It's only 13%? Only 13%. Amazing. 30% here in America. And I think it's maybe gone up a, a couple of points. But Jim Clifton, the CEO of Gallup, he says it's costing American industry $450 billion because of disengaged employees. Wow. Unhappy employees. Unhappy. Wow. But people see the problem with this thing, and people think, well, that's the problem is engagement. Engagement is a, is a symptom. Engagement is not the problem. Poor engagement is the problem. Mm. The root cause of all this is poor leadership. Mm. That's what we focused on leadership. If you don't mind me, if you don't mind me asking, uh, Jack, before you get further into mm -hmm. leadership, how do you deal with the situation that most people, when they go to sleep at night, they wake up in the morning, mm -hmm. dread or are not anxious, right, unhappy, right, about going to work, right. So before you even get to leadership, right, how do you deal with that barrier and that challenge? Well, that's a, that's a very important question. And the great thing about our company we had was called uh, People First University. We have seven PhDs, and so I defer to them on these questions. <laughs> so here's what, they, here's what they would say to this. That uh, unhappiness at home, it comes from uh, the thoughts of a person. It all starts with the thinking. Solomon, King Solomon said that as a person thinks in their heart, so are they. So unhappy people, they are, they're in this pain loop 
where they're constantly thinking these thoughts that some way that they're critical, some way that they're condemning, some way that they're condescending, where they're focused all on themselves. Mm. And happiness is, is all based on this. It's learning how to think more about others without thinking less about yourself. Wow. Wow. That's interesting. So that's what we do. Wow. So we teach the people in the, in the company, people say, well, how do you win the contracts? For example, uh, Kimberly Clark, you heard of Kimberly Clark? Sure I have. The cleanliness company. Yes. They said, we were looking for the number one, the best leadership company in North America to train all their people in leadership. They said, let me tell you why we chose you. We chose your company, and there are people, there are people for a certified company, Kimberly Clark Professional. So we chose you because you don't start with the organization. You start with the person. So your company, they said your company really, it's a, it's a transformational uh, system for human betterment, for achieving life mastery and business mastery. But it's based on teaching the person how to develop this capacity and capability to serve others in their personal life and solve problems. Wow, wow. Okay, so listen, that's amazing. Uh, so basically, you go in, you and your, your company's called in, and basically to go in and turn around a company's culture. Culture, that's it. That's going on, that's their right. culture. Right. Uh, obviously, happy employees, uh, happy employees improves product productivity. Right. Outcome is happy customers. Right. And healthy profits. There you go. Correct. There's so I so I've got to ask you, mm -hmm. uh, People First International, mm -hmm. your company. Mm -hmm. What separates People First International, your firm, from all the other companies and competitors that do the same thing as you? All of our PhDs, we have two people that have their PhD in psychology. And all the PhDs that we have in our company, I, I've asked them all this one question. Any class that you've ever taken, uh, getting a PhD in OD, a PhD in economics, a PhD in psychology, did you ever have one class that started with a definition of what it means to be human? Wow. And guess what they said? What they said? No class. Wow. Not one. Mm. So what separates us we start with a definition of what it means to be human. Right now in this country, the stress levels, uh, the U.S. Health Department says that right now in the 21st century, that this is an epidemic of stress. It's costing uh, America $300 billion a year because of the stress issues. And that comes back to people not really understanding that it's not about me. It's about the well-being of other, other people. Wow. Wow. And once you understand who you are, we start with the definition of what, I said of what it means to be human, that every person by their birthright, they have innate dignity, they have immeasurable worth, and exalted potential. Mm. Every human being, we say every human being is made in the image of God. And we have, you had your rabbi you talked about. I saw a picture of you and your right. rabbi. Rabbi, rabbi. Matthew Goldberg, yes. Okay, your rabbi would agree with this. Right. And you've got... Uh, Jewish people, you got a, uh, billions of people that are theists and they believe in a creator. And our founding fathers, they said that uh, every person is created equal. Mm. And we understand that what it means to be human, that I have, I don't have to work for worth, I work from worth. Wow, that's powerful, Jack. That's really powerful. Listen, uh, how is the people first approach different with respect to employee engagement? We say that engagement, as I said earlier, is that's not the problem, it's a symptom. The problem is poor leadership. Mm -hmm. DDI, they say that 6.4% uh, of people leave companies because of uh, poor benefits, but whereas 50% of the people leave the companies because of poor leadership. Wow. So it's a leadership problem. So that's how, what, what we say is that you've got to work with the leaders. There are only two types of leaders. You have your arrogant or hubristic leader, the leader that's all, it's all about me. 
They're self-absorbed. They're a prisoner of their own self-importance. Then you have the humble leader. Hmm. The humble leader is focused on you, and then you have no engagement problems. You have no trust issues with a humble leader. A humble leader knows how to bring out the best in every person. Right. Those people are hard to find. Yes, they are. They're hard to find. Yes, they are. Yes, they are. Find. That's right. Sometimes that uh, can't be taught. It's, it's, it's in you. Yes, yes. So what are some of the transformational results that People First International has achieved with your clients? We have a Berkshire Hathaway company. It is called MyTech Industries. Mm -hmm. They're a thousand employees. They're in 90 countries all over the world. And uh, Tom Menenti is the executive chairman of the board of the company. He answers directly to Warren Buffett. And he says, uh, Jack, people ask me, well, how was, how was MyTech doing? And I said, well, he said, well, in 2014, we've done better revenue profits than we've ever done in the history of the company. It's about 50-year-old business. Mm. So 2015, we beat that better in the 2015. So 2016, we're better than we were in 2014 and 2015. He so said, 2017, we're looking to do better than we've ever done. He said, can I tell you why? I said, yes, I'm not going to why. He said, because of our people-first culture. Wow. They're a people first certified company. Hmm. Every time they go out to uh, purchase a new company for the acquisition, they take our people first book, Dean, and they go and they give the CEO of the company they want to buy. They said, we're not going to talk to you about what we do or how we do it. Hmm. But we want to talk to you about why we do what we do and who we are. They give them the people first book and said, we're a people first certified company. They said, that's the secret sauce. Mm -hmm. The people say, wow, this is, like Simon Sinek says, start with why. Wow. Wow. So they start with why. This is why we do it, because we love people. They said, we've learned the secret to attracting the best and retaining the best, that we have learned this people first philosophy that teaches you how to treat people. Dean what Tom Menenti of MyTech Industries, what he said, he said, we found the secret sauce to regrowing our company. He said, we've learned the philosophy of people first, which is to treat everyone with the utmost dignity, respect, and honor. Wow. Wow. Amazing. So they're Amazing. growing that company. And he said, we've already trained over 1,200 people in the people first philosophy all across North America, starting in 2012. I mean, my tech's a big company. They're part of uh, Berkshire Hathaway. Oh, yes. They're one of Berkshire Hathaway companies. Right. They're in 90 countries. They're number one in their space worldwide. Wow. And their products and services are? It's a truss. They're in trusses. So it's a special device that they invented to hold trusses together. Wow. And it's a technology for that. And their goal is to be in every structure worldwide is their goal. They're, it's, it's amazing. Amazing. They have manufacturing plants. Wow. All the world, thousands of employees. I was gonna, I was gonna ask you how many, thousands, how many employees? Thousands, thousands all over the world. Wow. Amazing. Yes, it's, amazing. it's exciting. Awesome. So what is, uh, summarize, what exactly is the People First movement? The movement that, here is my mission. Dean, I want to teach every leader in the world the People First philosophy so that they can transform their own leadership, so they can transform cultures, so that we together can transform the world hmm. by putting other people first. Not profits first, not propaganda first or politics first, but people first. That's the transformational message. Amazing, amazing. How can someone become part of the people first community? We started the People First movement and the People First community to get into that is to really say that I want to be part of this and go to thinkpeoplefirst.com, Dean. And they can download uh, the ebook, the People First ebook for free. If a person will email me, that is mm -hmm. jack at thinkpeoplefirst.com, I'll give you a free four hour audio of the book and then how to become part of the community, wow. the People First Movement the community. It's a, it's a powerful movement to change the world. Well, listen, every day people, uh, you know, you're dealing with uh, a lot of people every day don't want to go to work today. Uh, they're dealing with a lot of personal stressors. 
as you know, we're in unprecedented times here in this country, yes. like never before <laughs> and worldwide, that is causing a tremendous amount of uh, stress for a lot of people. Yes, People have all sorts of things going on in their lives. And it's just uh, amazing as I get to know you more and your company. Mm -hmm. It's amazing the good, inspiring, inspiring goodwill mm -hmm. and how effective uh, I've seen that you are with Thank companies you. now for not a short time. Mm -hmm. You've been doing this for four, day, four decades. Yes, yes. It's pretty amazing. Thank you. So we could go on and on. We're going to do some more shows together with Jack Lamb, but uh, we don't have time. And uh, I want to thank you once again for inviting me into your home here in South Florida, in Fort Lauderdale. My honor. My honor. And, um, you know, I, I really appreciate it. Thank you. I mean, thank once you. again, my guest has been Jack Lanham. He's the founder and CEO of People First International. And uh, if you don't know him, you ought to get to know him. Uh, he's. <laughs> not only great at uh, changing uh, the culture and workforce of companies globally, he's a great guy. Thank you. So, uh, May I say something? Surely, go ahead. Uh, I want to tell everyone that you've got to watch the Dean Blakeman Show and Dean on the Street. <laughs> all, the, all the things, and I'm serious, that this guy is one of the most giving, loving, inspiring guys I've ever met in my life. And this is the first time I've ever met you. And Jeffrey, Michelle, he called me, he says, you've got to meet Dean. You've got to meet this amazing person. And so I feel like the Queen of Sheba when she met Solomon said the half has not been told me about Dean Blackman. So it's an honor to have well, you. Thank you, you for the taking your time you're to very, be here. You're very welcome. On that note, uh, I want to thank uh, all my listeners and viewers and audience, as always, that's been following me at the Dean Blackman Show and Dean on the Street. I love doing this every day. I really do. So from all of us at the Dean Blackman Show, everybody have a great day.